All right, so this is actually a pretty short training, um, but I am going to show you how you can set and then track goals utilizing command. So I'm gonna go ahead and click share screen. And you can see here that I'm on my command dashboard. So there's two ways that you can actually access your goals. One is if you just scroll down on your dashboard, you can click here and that'll bring you to your goals page. The other way is if on the left-hand side, you see where the white KW is and the red box. If you click that and you come down where it says reports and you click on reports, then over here, you can click on goals in the top center. And now you're here on your goals dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on goals settings. And it's gonna actually walk you through a guide. So it's very simple. I'm gonna click get started. Now you're gonna see that I have my goals set according to MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, right? That's like the real estate Bible, if you will. Um, so don't panic. Your numbers do not have to match mine. Um, and yet I want you to pay attention to these percentages. Um, I think it's a good rule of thumb that whether you want to make 20,000 a year or $5 million a year in real estate, sticking as close to these percentages as possible, 40% um, annual profit goal, 30% cost of sale with 30% operating expenses is gonna make sure that you're profitable and not in the red. So just good rule of thumb taught to us by um, Gary Keller in MREA. So on the right-hand side is where you get to start entering your own personal goals. So of course, we're gonna do them for this year. Then you're gonna to wanna to enter your goal profit. Now take a notice that where this little I is, if you hover your mouse over that, it will tell you exactly what that means. So annual profit goal is the profit your business earns before taxes and yet after subtracting cost of sale and operating expenses. So if you're telling yourself, I wanna take home $50,000 this year after expenses, but before taxes, you would then enter 50,000 in here. And you also wanna enter your expenses. And if you're like, well, Brittany, what's the difference between expenses and cost of sales? Again, you can just hover over this I and it tells you for you. So example of expenses are salaries. So if you are a rainmaker on a team, you might have admin salaries. Most of your lead gen and marketing expenses are gonna fall into this category. So if you pay for Facebook leads, um, or maybe postcards, education. So any classes that you pay for to help sharpen your ax and become a better agent, occupancy and automobile expenses. Now you might wanna check, check with your accountant. There's different ways to write off automobile expenses. I personally just track mileage, uh, but you might wanna check with the CPA to see what would be the best way for you to track those automobile expenses. Then over here, you have cost of sales. That would be your splits to your agents um, per transaction. If you pay a transaction coordinator like Denise or Tammy, any ISAs, this will also include your market center fees. So brokerage fees, your e &O, tech fees, things of that nature. Now down here is where you wanna enter in your business makeup. What that means is, is what are, what does your business made of? Is it mainly buyers, listings? Is it a combination of the two? Um, MREA says that it's best to have a 50-50 split and our market center is actually really close to that. So that's why I went ahead and did 50-50. Um, but you might wanna take a look at your own business, your past sales to see where your business falls. And then of course you wanna look at your average commission per transaction, okay? I um, mean, you wanna split that up with buyers and sellers. And the reason for that is, is this information is gonna help calculate how many appointments you need to go on to be able to make this amount of money then at the end of the year. So now I'm just gonna hit next. And now this is gonna talk about your goal conversion rate. So you can see over here, there's some pretty average conversion rates that you can utilize. And that's what I've entered over here on the right-hand side. 
you might know your conversion rates. Most people don't. So don't be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what my conversion rates are. That's okay. As you start tracking them in command, you'll actually be able to start seeing what your average conversion rate is. So just um, go ahead and I would say put in the average ones here, and then you're going to click save and continue. So you can see everything that we've entered in so far is now being pictured right here on this dashboard. And now it says, great, review your new goals. You can always go back to reports to make changes. And that's true. So if your goals change throughout the year, that's completely okay. You can always go back and edit them. They're not set in stone. So I'm gonna go ahead and click what's next. And I am gonna go ahead and click view my goals. And now you'll see your goals versus actual. But the real important thing here is right now it says this year in the top right. I wanna break this down by month, okay? Because if you look here, it's telling you that if you wanna make a million dollars in real estate, you have to have 3,950 contacts in a year. That sounds a little overwhelming. So you can actually break this down by month. So you can see that based on my goals, this is how many leads I need to bring in in a month. This is how many contacts I need to bring in in a month. These are how many appointments I need to set, how many appointments I need to meet, right? And notice that it's, it's different, right? So just because you set an appointment doesn't mean it's gonna keep. So that's why this number is different. This is how many of those appointments I'm gonna sign, whether with buyer's agency contracts or listing agreements. Out of those agreements, this is how many folks you need to get under contract in a month, and this is how many you need to close every month. Now, this remind remember, your numbers are going to look different than mine because mine is based off of the million-dollar real estate agent model to make a million dollars. Um, so if your goal is to make 50000 or or 100000 your numbers are going to vary. But here's what I would recommend that you do. Don't look at just the monthly numbers. All right, so if you know you need to set 99 appointments for the month, divide that by four. So 99 divided by four, that's 25, give or take. So I would break this down, take these numbers and divide them by four. So that way you know what you need to do every week. And on Monday, when you wake up, it's a clean slate. So let's just say, for example, this said you needed to meet um, 12 people a month. That means you need to have three appointments set a week. I think that's a lot more manageable to think about three appointments versus 12. So when you wake up Monday morning, you know that every morning you're lead generating because you need to set three appointments that week. And out of those three, you need to at least meet one to two on average, right? And then out of those, you need to sign at least one. And then at the end of the month, you know how many of those people you need to be getting under contract and just keep building your pipeline. Now, what's important though, is that you're creating your opportunities. So in opportunities, when you create an opportunity from someone that's, that you're working on setting an appointment and you fill out all this information here, down here in this left-hand corner, you're estimated budget or listing price, depending on if it's a buyer or seller, the average commission rate and what commission you expect to get from them. As they move through the pipeline and opportunities, that is how command actually sees where your goals are, right? So if you wanna look at goals versus actual, it's great if you input your goals but then you need to be making sure you're using opportunities correctly so you can see what your actuals are because it's going to be able to pull how many appointments have you set. So how many moved from cultivate to appointment set and then how many moved from appointment set to negotiating and then how many went from negotiating to under contract and then how many went from under contract to close as they move through the pipeline and as you are. So see how I'm just moving it over as you're moving through the pipeline and as you're editing that information in your opportunity to be accurate to that current buyer or seller situation, that's how you're going to be able to make sure that your reporting is accurate too. So that way you know exactly where you are, what your pipeline looks like and where you got to go. It's all in numbers. 
So if you have a plan to follow, basically a map, right? It's a route to get you to your destination. Then you'll know exactly what work you need to do and what areas you need to work on. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, definitely check out Anthony's MREA trainings um, because even if your goal isn't to make a million dollars in a year, but why not shoot for the stars? Because you'll definitely do better than you did last year, right? If you have a big goal and big dreams. Um, but check those out because all of these tie in together. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you at our next training.